Throughout my life, there have been countless times where I've been the one thing holding me back from everything that I've wanted in life. I was always quick to blame my situations, my circumstances, the people around me, but it was too hard for me to look in the mirror and see the exact reason why I wasn't where I wanted to be. From my goals, my dreams, my relationships, my health, and anything that I truly wanted to thrive. Although I've had countless failures, I started to learn why I became my own roadblock. And thanks to many mentors and inspiration from podcasts and videos and working on myself, I finally began to find my way. So here are the few things that I learned that have helped me and helped me move forward today. If you want like the juiciest part of this video right away, here it is. There's never a perfect time to start. Marriage, kids, a job, a dream, an idea, never. Every good thing that I've ever had in my life, I've almost felt rushed. And I, and I don't wanna say like I, I did things too fast. It never felt like the right time. So when we got married, when I decided to propose to Carlene, it was it didn't feel like the right time. It was it it didn't feel like I felt like I was like moving fast. And then we got married fairly quickly, like 10 months, maybe it's not that quick, but it felt fast. I felt like, man, I'm young. I I look back and I wish I would have got married sooner. I tell this to my wife all the time. I was like, man, I wish we got married sooner. Kids, I wanted to have kids at 30. We ended up having kids at 25. I felt like, man, this is too soon. I look back now, I tell my wife, I wish we got married early and we had kids at like 21. And anything that I've ever started when it comes to like my dreams, I always look back after I started and I'm like, there was no perfect time. It's better to just start and start sloppy and, and learn how to be okay with sloppy along the way because time only moves in one direction. We can overthink, we can overanalyze, we can think of every reason why something might fail, but time is only still moving. It's only ticking away. You can only get better if you learn from your mistakes, if you learn from the things that you didn't think about. I like to err a little bit more on the side of, let me just make a few mistakes and learn from that versus trying to find the perfect way to do something before I start. Have an idea and just follow through. I guarantee you if you have some faith and if you have the right intentions and the right heart, you'll figure it out. You'll figure out how to make something work. And just going back to the failure piece, I had to learn to be okay with failure because avoiding failure doesn't save you any pain in the long run. If anything, avoiding failure causes you more pain. And the reason why I say that is when you have a dream, when you have something you want to do, but you're afraid to make a mistake, you spend more time beating yourself up because you're not, you're not doing the thing. You have that, that quench. You can't quench that thirst because you're, you're, const, you're literally constantly in pain because you're like, I wish I could just do this, but I don't want to mess up. That, that cycle, that loop is more painful than just going out there, starting it, doing whatever it is, marriage, kids, an idea, a dream, whatever, and just scraping your knees a little bit up, putting a Band-Aid on, okay, I know not to do that, and just moving forward. Now, it might not be as simple <laughs> as a, a scratch boo-boo, but truly, it's easier. The pain is, maybe I can even say, the pain is the same, but at least you're moving in the right direction. At least you started. The pain is the same whether or not you start and you make a mistake or you don't do anything and you beat yourself up. So why not start? I've realized that the problem with most of us is that we're so critical. You ever think about somebody, you look at, you look at somebody's life, right? Um, and you see something that they did. And a lot of times as family members, we do this too. We look at that and we're like, man, what, what were they thinking? Like, what's wrong with them? And you think like, man, I'm so critical. But you think, you don't realize that this is how you talk to yourself. You talk to yourself like this. And this is something I think we learn along the years. So being really critical, it might have saved us some embarrassment in high school so we didn't make bad mistakes or make a fool of all of ourselves and get embarrassed by other people. But in the long run, in our long run of life, it actually causes us more pain than anything because we're constantly beating ourselves up. In life, some of the best parts of, I feel like some of the best parts of our lives are based on the risks, new adventures, the new opportunities that we take 
a leap of faith on. If we don't take any leaps of faith and we stay in this little bubble, this safe bubble, I don't think we can live an extraordinary life. And that does not mean you can't live a simple life and have an extraordinary life, because I think you can. I think you can live a very simple life, but live extraordinarily. But I don't think that living in a bubble of safety, never starting something new, never going after a dream or something that stretches you is going to lead you to a life that at the end you feel like I lived a life full of purpose. I, I lived with every ounce of energy. I gave everything I got. I had to stop being critical of myself. I had to really be aware and pay attention to the thoughts that I was having when I would, let's say, fail or when I thought about failing and realize that I'm only being critical to myself. Most people really probably don't even care what I'm doing. Most people probably don't even care what you're doing. And even if they do for a second, they're, they're worried about their own life right after. So instead of living your life towards what are people gonna think? What am I gonna think? Just move towards what, what your dream. Move towards what, what makes you feel alive. I wanted to go outside for this next point. It's really beautiful outside, right? Nice. Truly, one of the things that I've, I've learned is that it's harder to start than it is to, to keep going. So you ever, you ever told yourself, hey, I'm gonna work out, but on your way to the gym, you're like, you're dying. You feel like, oh man, I, I wish I, I just stayed home. You're dreading it. Even as you're scanning your barcode, you're like, dude, I could just turn around. But as soon as you lift that first set, you're like, well, it's not too bad, I'm kind of in it. Then you're like, in your second or third exercise, you're like, I'm already here. I'm good, I, I'm glad I came. I'm just, you're kind of flowing. Like, that's really how it is with anything. It's harder to start. It's harder to get ourselves motivated to start than it is to keep going. So start fast, just get going. And sometimes whenever I, when I'm really struggling with trying to get something going or start something that I said I was gonna do, I just focus on doing the first minute. It's less daunting in my head. It, there's less resistance from my body to just do the thing. And that's the only goal. Like, okay, I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start filming. Like, I'll just press record and everything else flows. And it doesn't feel so hard because once you're in it, you're just, you're kind of flowing, you know? So just start. It's really that simple. What I've seen for me is the more that I start and follow through, the more I've grown as a person and built the habit of following through with the things that I say that I'm gonna do. The more that I build trust with myself, that I'm gonna follow through with the dreams that I give myself, follow through with the, the purpose that I have for myself. One of, the, one of the most painful feelings is not being able to trust yourself. One of the most painful feelings is not being able to depend on yourself to follow through with the things that are deep inside of your soul, within your heart. And I, I want that more than anything, not only for me, but for you. Follow through with the things that are important to you. Don't be somebody that's flaky to yourself. Okay, you can be flaky to a friend that told you they wanna go out or whatever. Don't be flaky to yourself. If you said you're gonna do something, do it. You don't lose anything from starting and, and, and failing a couple times, bumping your knees a couple times. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to, to not have the perfect answer, to not have the perfect solution to something, but just start. I hope, I hope if you are looking for a reason today, this was your reason, because it's really not as hard as you're making it. But I know if you just start what you said you wanna do, you're gonna have a story to tell at the end. And somebody out there is going to need to hear it. So hope this helped you guys. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.